Hi, this is Larry Dorf, Math Curriculum Consultant for Big Ideas Learning. And you're viewing video number four in the series, How to Use Your Dynamic Assessment Resources DVD, specifically the Exam View Assessment Suite. In the first three videos, we took a look at how to create a quiz, test, or worksheet in Exam View, how to edit that quiz, test, or worksheet, and then how to format it so that it's in the position that we'd like it to be in before we print it or, and or publish it. So today that's exactly what we're going to look at is taking the test that we have already edited and formatted and now we want to take a look at how to print that quiz test or worksheet and then publish it so that if you would like students could take the test online either for practice or as an actual test. What you're viewing right now is a quiz that I created in exam view for, uh, for grade 6, the green book chapter 1, a quiz on sections 1, 1 to 1, 3. I created the quiz, edited it, and formatted it to the place that I'd like it to be in. And now I'm ready to first print the quiz so that my students can then take it as a printed quiz. So I'm going to come up to the file menu and I'm going to go down to print test. Now when you do print test, the first thing you're going to see is a window that asks you how many versions of the test would you like to print. You can print just one or you can print two or more. Many versions are available for you to print. As you ask the printer to print or the exam view test generator to print more than one version, it's going to ask you if you'd like to scramble the sections. So if I'm printing, let's say, three versions, perhaps I'd like to create a practice version, an actual version, and then a retest version. Or maybe I'm concerned about cheating in my classroom, so I'd like to print a different version for each row of students in my class. I can scramble the sections so that on one test, the multiple choice comes first. On another test, the short answer comes first, and so on. I could scramble the questions so that within the multiple choice section, question number one on one version of the test is a different question than question number five, uh, or, or question number one on another version, I should say. So I can mix those questions up within each section. I can also scramble the multiple choice response answer choices. I like that particular one because then every student is going to have the same question. For instance, if I slide this, this window over and take a look at this first question, every student's going to have that same question, but the answer choices will be mixed so that the choice A, pounds gained equals 72 plus 89, might be choice B on one of the other versions and maybe choice C on another version. I can also click Calculate New Algorithmic Values. If you remember when we talked about the test and specifically in the video on editing, we talked about how the questions that have these little gray calculator icons next to them are algorithmically generated, which means that I can create more than one version of that same question. So if I click Calculate New Algorithmic Values, this problem might read a tortoise weighed 72 pounds two years ago today it weighs 89 pounds another student might have one that says a tortoise weighed 63 pounds two years ago today it weighs 71 pounds and then it might say how many pounds did the tortoise gain and have different choices so calculating new algorithmic values will create a different version of each of those same as question number two it might be A plus B in this version, and then it might be B plus C in the next version, or A plus C in the third version. When you're doing this and you're creating multiple versions, you might want to print yourself a version map. This is a map that lets you know that question number one on the A version of the test is similar to question number five on the B version, and which is similar to question number seven on the C version. That way you know which questions match up on each of the versions of the test. So after you've decided how many tests you want to print, how many versions, and how you'd like to scramble up and change up those versions, click OK, and then you'll be able to print your tests and you'll be ready to go. Each test will print out with an ID at the top. It'll be ID A, B, C. If you don't want that to appear at the top of the test, 
when we looked at editing, I showed you how you can edit those by changing your header. Uh, again, just to remind you, that is under the test menu, and just come down to headers, and you can edit your header and take that ID out if you don't want to have that there. Okay, so now I've printed the test, and now the next thing I'd like to do is save it. So I'm going to come over here to File, and I'm going to click Save. When you click Save, you'll notice that it's going to be saved as whatever title you'd like to call it. If you want to call it uh, Quiz 1.1 to 1.3, it's going to save it in exam view under a folder called Tests, and it's going to save it as an exam view test. It's a .tst. You can save this test anywhere. You don't have to save it in exam view. I could change this to my desktop. I could save it there. I could save it on a flash drive. I could save it on a network folder. It's up to you as to where you'd like to save your test. But if you do save your test, just as you see here as a .tst, it can only be opened by a computer that has exam view loaded on it. So if your computer has exam view on it, you'll be able to pull it up as a TST. And any other computer that you're on that has exam view, you'll be able to view that test. But what if you'd like to, uh, for instance, create a test and share it with others that want to take a look at your quiz or test or worksheet that don't have exam view on their computer? Well, you can save it as a Word document. And what you'll do is you'll come to, to the file menu and pick publish to and you'll have a choice here you can publish it to different places such as angel or vista but you can also import or even export and that's what we're going to do right now we're going to export to rich text format again under the file menu export rich text format and now again you can save this anywhere that you like you can save it to again your flash drive your desktop and 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 whatnot but when you save this, it's going to save as a .rtf. So I'll show you what will happen. I'm going to do quiz on 1.1 to 1.3. And I'm going to click um, save it to my desktop. And then what you'll see is when we go to the desktop and I click on it, you can see that it is now a Word document. Now when it's in Word, you won't have the same type of editability that you would in exam view. You'll notice that, for instance, my columns, although I see two columns here, there are no longer any vertical or horizontal lines uh, separating out the questions. The formatting is not quite the same as what I had in exam view, but at least this gives an opportunity for people who don't have exam view on their computers to view your tests and make some slight changes to it if you want them to do that. So that's one thing that you can do is save your test to a rich text format. Another option that you have available with your quiz is to publish your quiz uh, online to a website. Perhaps you have a, a website at the school where you can post things like homework assignments and activities and whatnot that you would like the students to take the test on or, or be able to practice. And so again, under the file menu, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to export, but this time I'm going to export to HTML. If I export to HTML, I'm going to be asked to, to give two choices. I can either export as a study guide, and you see here it says on a study guide, students can compare their responses, but it will not be recorded or emailed to the instructor. Or I can export it as an actual test where the report would be emailed to the instructor. So let's look at the first one. Let's look at export as a study guide. So I'm going to click export as a study guide and I'm going to click OK. And then what it's going to ask me to do is to save that quiz that I'm exporting as a study guide. You notice that the type that it's saving it as is a web page. So I'm going to call it the same thing. I'm going to call it quiz on 1.1 to 1.3 and I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to go to my web uh, or to my desktop I should say and click on that saved quiz that I put on the on the desktop to you to access. Notice that the quiz now that I've accessed on my desktop is able to be accomplished by completing it right on the computer. I have multiple choice here and I'm just going to randomly without reading the problems just pick some responses just to show you what it, what it looks like. 
So students will be able to answer these. They'll access this right on the website. They'll answer the questions. The numeric response will ask them to fill in a value and put that here. So they'll be able to put the numbers in the spaces. And then for the short answer questions and the extended response questions, they'll type in some information and, um, and be able to answer the question that way. So they'll be able to compare the answer that they type and then see what the actual type, what the actual answer is asking for. Same for the extended response. Once the students are finished, they can click check your work. And of course, it's telling us here we didn't answer all of the questions, but we do want to end the test. And now the students can see, well, I did get the first one right, but I didn't get that one or that one right. Uh, so there's a little X here. The correct answer is listed below each one, so the kids know what the quest correct answer is. The numeric response, it said I did give the correct answer of 19. These are the answers for the others. And then these are the sample answers that are expected for the short answer and also the extended response. Now the students can retake this quiz over and over again, but they're not going to get a different version of the test. It will be the same version of the quiz tester worksheet that you've posted. But that's what that um, quiz looks like if you post it as a study guide. Now I'm back to the quiz in exam view, and this time, perhaps instead of uh, saving it as a study guide, I'd like the students to actually take this test online and have the results sent to me. So now I'm going to go back up to File, Export, HTML, and this time I'm going to click it as Export as a Test. Now I have a choice, since it is a test, do I want to show the scores to the students or not? I'm going to put my name here, so if you don't want the kids to have your first name, we'll just put Mr. Dorf. My email address, my email address that I would like the results sent to, I'm going to click OK. And again, I'm going to save this quiz, so I'm going to call it the same thing, quiz on 1.1 to 1.3. And I'll click Save. And of course, there is one that already exists. I'll replace that on my desktop. Now let's go and take a look at that one on my desktop just to show you what the difference is between that quiz and the one that you just saw a little bit ago. You'll notice this quiz looks quite similar, except at the top now we're going to ask the students to type their name, ID number if you have one for them, and their email address. They're going to answer the questions just like they would normally. So again, I'm just going to randomly choose a few of these to answer. And I'm just going to type some gibberish in a couple of these spaces just so you can see what it would look like when they're finished. And then once they're completed, it's going to be instead of retake or check your work, it's grade and submit. So once they click that, oh, I'm sorry, the student name can't be blank. So let's go ahead and, and put a student's name in there. And uh, again, let's come down here and click grade and submit. And of course, it's telling us again, we didn't answer some of those questions, but we're okay with that. So let's click OK. And now it says the results have been sent to me, Mr. Dorf, at my email address. And then they can exit out of the screen. Now what I'd like to do next is I'd like to take you to my email and show you what kind of an email you get from this fictitious John student once that he's taken the test. Now I'm in my email and you can see there's an email waiting for me uh, under the topic exam view website results for quiz 1-1 to 1-3 and you can see in the body of the email the test results for John when it was submitted, so I know exactly when he took the test, his score, and then down here below you can see the multiple choices. John was very lucky, he got the first three right, and you can see the ones that he did not get correct, the ones that he left blank, and then the short answer questions you would grade for him. Unfortunately, there hasn't been developed a system that grades uh, short answer and extended response questions very well. But it does remind you here that, that the question marks are open-ended questions that have not been graded yet. So these four questions, you would be on your own to grade for that student. But it did grade the others for John. And so those are the different options that you have to print 
and to publish your quiz, test, or worksheet online so your students can take them either at home or at school or in your classroom. Remember that you can always visit our website, www.bigideasmath.com. Come to the bottom of the screen where it says Technical Support, and there you will find both an email address and a phone number to contact us if you have any questions, not only about the Exam View program, but any of the technology resources that are available to you under the Big Ideas Math program. You also have technology resources that you can print. There is a quick start guide for Exam View, as well as the full manual for the Exam View test generator which will take you through each of the steps of the process and even take you into some of the other pieces that we didn't get a chance to take a look at today. Again, I hope you found this information helpful as you start working with ExamView and please don't hesitate again to contact us at Technical Support if you have any questions as you're working with your Dynamic Assessment Resources DVD. Thanks again. Have a great day.